It is December 7th, 2017, and it is the first snow of the season. Also, I have a cold. I'm very sick. Interesting stuff is happening. <laughs> I've said it before, the only place I want to be for a zombie apocalypse is this room. We do have an asshole bath. So it is the weekend, and I'm done with my classes, and I'm going to see kittens, but I might adopt one of, but it's snowing really hard. Well, for the Midwest, not that hard, but my car is slipping everywhere and I'm having so many problems. portfolio. I've been putting them on that table because it's kind of a... The heat always comes on while I'm talking. Now I'll just have to project my voice more. So I've been putting them on that table because it's a neutral background. But I'm not tall enough to get a top-down photo, so I've been standing on the table. And just now I tried to step backwards off the table and hit the couch, and it twisted my ankle the wrong way and I fell. I looked it up and you're supposed to keep it elevated. I'm gonna elevate my ankle and put some ice on it and feel stupid for 15 minutes. So this is my roommate's cat, Mishka. You may recognize him. Mishka is the reason I can't bring home a cat yet because Mishka doesn't like other cats. But since the Siamese cat is my mom's favorite uh, breed, I almost said brand, but since my mom really likes Siamese cats, she's agreed to keep the cat I adopted at her house. So I got one little boy named Casper and I love him and I went to the pet store and bought all kinds of pet things for him. I dipped way into my savings to spoil the heck out of him. I got him a five foot tall cat tree so that he can climb to his heart's content. I thought it would be fun to open some of the cat toys I got and see what Mishka thinks of them. Yeah, I said your name. So let's find out what he thinks. Do you wanna know what's in this bag? So this toy has a little ball inside of it that the cat can't get out. What do you think of it? He doesn't know what to do. Let's move on to the next one. I also got, man, I really need scissors. I'll be back. You play with that for a second, babe. Okay, 
Alright, you ready for your next toy? No, he really is not. He's good with that one. Hey, Mishka. Oh, what's this? Oh, it makes noise? Oh my god. So this is called the Our Pets Twinkle Mouse Play Wand. These are just like little balls with uh, noise makers inside. ASMR. I feel like he's too distracted by this to really care. And then we have the best one, the laser pointer. Oh, now he's interested. He wants to know what this is. <laughs> what could possibly be in this one? This is called a peekaboo pipe. Ooh! So, I don't really think he can play with this uh, in here. Will you ever stop playing with this one? Like, if I put it away? Oh, he's going in it. He's going inside the tunnel, folks. <laughs> oh no! There you go. I think that's really it, other than brushes and stuff. Hey, Stephanie. Hi. Hey, what? We made it. We did. It's our last day. So I've been working on my final graphic design project. Um, Mishka is watching me talk about this. Oh, you just big yawned. I love him so much. Hi. Hello. I've been working on my final project for my publication design class. That's the class that sucks a lot that I mentioned last time. The homework was to write our own manifesto. So basically write about what we believe in terms of graphic design um, and to also pick at least one other student's manifesto and put it into our book. So I bound this book with uh, a ribbon of elastic. This side of the book is my friend Stephanie's manifesto, and if you flip it over, it's my manifesto. The cover is made out of recycled cardboard. I went to the recycling center and grabbed a box and cut it down to the square shape. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks a lot better than I thought it would. The manifestos are only like 500 words each, so I figure I might as well read mine to you. Do Good Design, a manifesto by Morgan Gale. Design at its heart is a tool for communication, whether we view it as a trade or an art. It shapes the way that people see. This gives designers the capacity to put good energy into the world but design can also be used to manipulate and cause harm. Because of this, designers have a huge amount of responsibility to create with a conscience. The First Things First Manifesto, drafted by a great number of designers in 2000, points out that design has become so commercialized that it's primarily associated with advertising and not much else. I've seen this to be true in my own experience. When I attend workshops and conferences about politics, LGBTQ issues, gender equity, and other social justice topics, I am the lone designer in a sea of social work majors, political science students, and others of similar fields. Graphic design, by and large, is not seen as relevant to such important causes outside of making posters, of course. It is imperative that we change this perception of what we do. Design for good is not a new concept. Coined by AIGA in 2011, it is defined as a movement that commits itself to social impact and civic engagement. Designers have the power to influence how people receive information and, consequently, interact with the world around them. The layout of a brochure will affect reader comprehension, the signage on public transit will affect ease of use, and the visuals in a political campaign will affect how people vote. Design
design decisions have a considerable impact on the communities we live in. Therefore, it is irresponsible to view graphic communications as solely a method of selling a product or making a pretty poster. We produce objects that are seen by millions. Those objects need to be thoughtful and sustainable. Above all, those objects need to serve their communities. By viewing the issues of today as design problems, we can make it easier for communities to access vital information. We can choose to make work that helps immigrants read and understand their legal rights. We can choose to make work that frames sex education as more friendly and accessible. We can choose to make work that increases media literacy and helps the public identify biased sources. If we are working for a large company, we can still push for sustainable and ethical production. We can ensure that marketing doesn't objectify women and other marginalized groups. And if we are in a financial position to do so, we can refuse to take on work that compromises our values of accessibility and compassion. If we rise to this calling, however, there is one more pitfall that we must watch for, and that pitfall is thinking that designers have the answers to every problem. While we may be able to tackle a problem in new and creative ways, we must always involve the community in the process of design. People should be asked what they need, they should be given the power to test a prototype, and they should hold the power to correct us. When we design, we must draw from the culture of the community that we are designing for. Any other method is destined to fail. Design is more than just a business or an art. It's a method of changing the world. Let's use our platform for good. And then, there's the work sided on the inside. Oh, and the bottom is upside down, which means if you flip it upside down, it's, uh, it's the end of Stephanie's section, which looks very similar to mine. So yeah, that's my project that's been my headache all week. So I have to go turn this project in and do a final, and then I'm done with the whole semester. You don't want me. I do want you in this. Do you want me to take that? Yes, no. Who's right? Do you need a dab? So I'm at Val's house up in Michigan, um, and Val went to work, and the power went out, conveniently, while I was here alone. So I tried to light some candles, but I'm afraid of fire, and I don't know how to work lighters, and the matches kept burning my hands. Val messaged me, telling me where, uh, this weird lantern was. It's kind of pretty, actually. What uh, oh, here come the dogs. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. It's Jake! Hi! Hello! Oh, you're a good boy. The dogs have been keeping me company during this dark time. I won't be back until like midnight, <laughs> so I'm just... Oh, wait, is there another one? Oh, it's Diego who has darker fur so you can't see him. Jake is such a good boy. Hello. He's old. Cat home today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, this is him. I love him. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> Are you okay?
that to me. <laughs>